everybody, welcome back to Making Stuff with Mrs. Brody. I'm Mrs. Brody, and today we're going to be talking about dyeing fabric, and we're going to use a few different ways to do it. I'm not going to show you the whole process of each one, I'm just going to give you some ideas on how you could do it at home with some of these supplies. So the most obvious one to dye fabric is, is a store-bought tie-dye kit from anywhere, Michaels, Walmart. If you have it, great. If you don't, that's okay. I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do. And these are blues and greens, some of my favorite colors. And with that, it comes with gloves, but I also have extra gloves just in case. Another way we can dye fabric is with Sharpie markers. So I have some basic colors here, our primary and secondary colors. I have rubbing alcohol. That's going to be important. I have some little cups just in case I need to pour things out. I have a paintbrush for one technique, and I have a dropper for another technique. I didn't have any pipettes in my studio, so I dug this out of uh, the medicine cabinet. We used it to feed my cat after she had a little surgery, and it's clean, and I think this is gonna work good with our rubbing alcohol. The last way we're going to dye fabric is with natural dyes, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. I have some linen napkins soaking in some salt water, um, that helps set the color. And I also have some raspberries that I dug out of the freezer that were a little too freezer burned to eat. So I'm simmering those on the stove to kind of suck out all the color from that. So a minute I'm going to show you that one and then we'll go back to the tie dye. Some other things that you might need, I have my nice plastic table to work on in my studio so I can make as big of a mess as I want to. If you're at your house, you might have to think of an area that it's okay to get a little messy in. So right in the middle of your living room, probably not the best plan, but talk to the grown-up people in your house and figure out an area. You might need some plastic. I have plastic bags. You could use a plastic shower curtain, a garbage bag, just something to cover your area and also to hold your dyed fabric while it soaks. And then for my fabric, you want to use natural fabrics. You can't use sort of like rayon and things that have those weird texture, like those sports shirts you guys wear when you work out. That's not going to work out very well. So I have some linen napkins here. They're actually big towels that I cut down. So I have a few of those. I have some white leggings because I never really wear them, but if they're tie-dye, maybe I will. And then just a plain white cotton t-shirt. This one is from Old Navy and I have about a thousand of these. So if I make this and it doesn't look great, I have other ones I can do it on. So I have a t-shirt, leggings, and a few napkins and other napkins in the pot. Okay, on to tie-dye. So, like I said before, I have my three colors here, my different jars, and I am putting on some gloves because I am a messy person. And, oh my goodness, this is a messy project. So, your tie-dye kit, no matter what you get, is probably going to have one of those little pamphlets on it that tells you some different techniques that you could use. And it's going to give you directions on how to fill this the things up. So, on these guys... Um, I'm just going to fill it to that line. It's got the handy dandy instructions there. I'm going to give it a little shake for each of these. And then there are two different ways I'm going to tie dye. One, I'm going to use my t-shirt and I just soak this in some cold water and then wring, wrung it out really well. So it's damp, but not really soaking wet. I'm going to put some rubber bands in different places. I'm not going to do a pattern. I'm just going to do random and see what happens. For my leggings, I've already done some rubber banding, and this one I'm going to do dry. And these two different techniques are going to give you different results at the end. So I'm going to hit the fast forward button, and you're going to watch this sort of sped up so you don't have to listen to me talk for 20 minutes, okay? Let's get started. So when you're all done tie dyeing, you wanna put them in a plastic bag of some kind and you wanna let them sit six to eight hours, sometimes up to 24, it's up to you. Then you're gonna rinse them really, really well, give them a wash and a dry. And when we come back, you're gonna see the finished project. I don't know if I'll wear it all at the same time, do a little modeling, that might be fun. Um, but yeah, make sure that you let them rest. You can't just immediately rinse, things aren't gonna set. All 
All right, my lovelies, as you can see, I've set myself up here for the Sharpie part of dyeing our fabric. I have one of my linen napkins here. I have the rubbing alcohol in these cups. I have my sort of syringe thing, my paintbrush, and I have my markers. So I did this, oh gosh, probably a decade ago. So it's been a long time since I've done this. So this napkin is gonna be sort of experimentational. My next one, that's when I'll have maybe more of a better idea of what my design's gonna be. So I'm gonna try out a few things and you guys can watch and see what you like and maybe do it on your own, okay? As always, I start with blue cause it's my favorite color. So I'm gonna take the blue Sharpie marker and let's make some dots. Now I'm using my plastic table, so again, it's okay that I don't have anything underneath this. It's gonna bleed through onto the table and that's okay. I am gonna use a plastic bag when I get to the rubbing alcohol part, okay? So I have my blue circle there and then maybe let's make some smaller dots around. And you can see if I hold that Sharpie marker there for a second, it will sort of spread out away from the point of it a little bit because the fabric is absorbing that ink a little bit. So we're gonna make some dots around and then let's make some lines and see how that goes. You can see I'm sort of holding and pulling the fabric a little bit. If you've ever done puffy paint or used um, fabric markers, you know that you kind of have to hold the fabric near where you're coloring, give it a little kind of stretch with your fingers to hold it in place. All right, so that's my blue. Now we have to think about the color that goes really nicely with blue. So if I put another color in here, when I add that rubbing alcohol, the color's gonna kinda go whoosh away from the central location. So if I use green with the blue, that's gonna look nice. Yellow, red or purple, orange, not so much with that orange. So let's do some green dots. Kinda hard to tell the difference when it's that little. So doing some green dots around my blue ones. And then let's make just some green lines like this. All right. Okay. So let's see if this little syringery thing works with the rubbing alcohol. So a lot like a pipette, I'm going to put it in the alcohol and then pull up with it. And hopefully that will get sucked up into the barrel of the syringe. And oh, it did. Victory is mine. Now I don't want to soak this. I want to put just enough rubbing alcohol that the Sharpie will, ha ha, look at that. The Sharpie will bleed out from where I've put the rubbing alcohol. Let's see what happens when you start putting it near the greens. That's exciting. Look at it spread out from the center. Now let's say you don't have it looks so cool. Look at how it's bleeding together. Let's say you don't have a, a syringy thing like this. I could use a paintbrush. I could take my paintbrush and dip it in the rubbing alcohol and dot it on the marker and see if it would work that way, which I think it will totally. Okay, so I've done my blues and greens, some of my favorite colors. Let's see if we can make some shapes. So if I make a heart down here, with an orange Sharpie marker. Look at that, that's a pretty perfect heart, Mrs. Brody. Go you. And let's put some yellow on the inside of it, maybe. And then let's make this a warm color heart. So let's put a little bit of red right on the inside with dots. Okay, are you ready? Let's use our paintbrush this time and see what happens. Oh, nice. Red dots are kind of spreading a little bit. So I'm just taking some alcohol and just kind of dropping it. And it has to be rubbing alcohol. The kind that you would have in your medicine cabinet. That's going to work with the Sharpie markers. And I'm sure there's some science behind it. I would love if somebody did a little research and got back to me on what the science is. Other than absorption, for sure. What's happening with that rubbing alcohol? and the Sharpie marker. How cool do these look? The red almost turned a little bit of pink in there. And look at the blue and green now that it has a chance. It's really spreading out, looking a little tie-dyed. I wonder if my tie-dye is gonna look this good. So when you're doing this, again, you don't have to have a syringe, paintbrush works fine. You are gonna need Sharpie and they can't be 
um, water-based. They have to be permanent markers. If you don't have Sharpies, experiment with other permanent markers. Can't be Crayola or other water-based markers like that. That's a whole nother thing. Think about colors that are going to blend together. So putting this orange next to blue, I wouldn't have been good, but keeping them in their color families, that's the way to go. All right. Experiment, maybe on some scrap cloth that you have laying around. Make sure that it's cotton or linen or something natural, and I'll see what you guys got. So another tip for you guys, pets and dyeing fabric, not a good plan. This is Cece. She's at the gate in between the rest of my house and my studio, and she is not happy, and she really wants to get back here, but I don't really want blue kitty prints all over my house. So I'm sorry, Cece. You're locked out for a couple hours. I think she's sad. Yeah, she's just going to watch me now. Okay, Cece. Later you can come inside, okay? All right, ladies and gents, these are my raspberries. They've been simmering on the stove for about 45 minutes. And you can see, if I give it a little stir, I'm using a skewer. So if it gets stained, I can just throw it away. No big deal. When I stir it, you can see that lovely kind of pink color in the water. When these are done simmering, I'm going to take them over to the sink and strain them with a strainer or a cheesecloth, something to get the chunks out but leave the liquid behind. And then the liquid's going to go back into the pot. And like I said before, I have some linen napkins over here. They've been soaking in some salt water. So I took some salt, put it in the water, brought it up to a boil, and then I turned the heat off and put the linens in. So these have to soak for an hour. This has to simmer for an hour. So it kind of works out by the time these are done simmering, this will be ready to strain and I can move on to the next step. And I try to keep myself organized. I have a little note here on what to do. And I even have a note on the back on how to use coffee. I'm not going to do that today. Maybe I'll save that for another day. And I just got these ideas off of the internet. I looked up natural dyes and there was a lot of suggestions, but the one thing I had was berries. So I went with it. So we're going to go. Okay. I wanted to show you guys. I, this is the pot that the raspberries were in and I've strained them into this, um, measuring cups. So it'll be easy to pour back in the pot, but this is what happened to the raspberries. Kind of looks like a brain or something, right? And it's been dripping into that pot for like a couple of minutes, making sure I get all of that lovely color. And now this is going to go back into the pot. The pot's going to go back under the stove and I'm going to put the fabric in it that I've rinsed out with cold water. And again, you don't have to follow these steps. You can find your own on the internet. I'm just showing you the things that I did for my colors. So I'm going to take the raspberries. Look at that beautiful color. Pouring it back into the pot. So pretty. Okay. And now I'm going to add the fabric, put it back on the stove, and then I think it has to simmer for another hour or so. So here we have the linen napkins are in that raspberry water. And you can hear it's kind of bubbling away. You can see some bubbles happening right about there. So every few minutes or so, I'm giving it a little stir because I don't have a lot of liquid in here. I think ideally you'd want liquid to be kind of above the fabric line. That's why you're giving it a stir. So I have about ooh, 26 minutes left of this, and then I'm going to move on to the next step, which is to remove them from the heat, let it cool a little bit, and then give it a little rinsky. All right, so we're at the end and we have our finished projects. I have my tie-dye shirt, which let's face it, turned out pretty fantastic, right? And my favorite colors. I did finish the leggings to go with it. Now remember this, we did damp cloth with the tie-dye and then this was dry cloth with the tie-dye. So a little bit different than how the t-shirt ended up, but the whole thing got covered. My rubber bands didn't work great. It didn't leave a whole lot of white spots left over. So I think if I did it again, I would do maybe a little less dye, definitely for this fabric. 
And then for our raspberry napkins, which surprisingly didn't smell like raspberries when they were done, and that made me a little sad, but they turned out these beautiful kind of pink colors, and the edges got a little darker. The internet said that if it wasn't dark enough, I could always put it back into the raspberries or even maybe blackberries and make it kind of a purple color. Nifty noodles, right? And they don't have to be perfect because, you know, natural dyes, who knew what was gonna happen, right? And then the one that I'm most proud of that I think turned out the best is the Sharpie marker one that I did. So taking the Sharpie markers and making those lines and then doing the rubbing alcohol on the top, I did notice that on this, the cool colors, the blue, the purple, the green, I didn't really lose the lines on that. Where with the yellow and the red and the orange, the warm colors in the middle, they kind of blended away a little better. So if I did this again, I might stick with those warm colors if I wanted it to be more blendy and more tie-dye, right? So when you do this at home, again, you don't have to have a tie-dye kit, but if you do, go for it, it's super fun. Make sure that you wear gloves though, because when I was rinsing it out, I have blue fingernails, I'm turning into a Smurf now. So make sure you wear your rubber gloves. Um, but if you don't have tie-dye, try those natural dyes. Look on the internet for different ideas. I know there's spices that will give them colors, other fruits and veggies, and obviously, don't waste food. But like I said, for mine, my raspberries were a little freezer burned. I wasn't gonna eat them anyway perfect for the food dyes. And for the Sharpie markers, they have to be permanent markers. You can't use water-based, Crayola, anything like that, and make sure that you have rubbing alcohol. That's the only alcohol that's gonna work, okay? Make sure that you are being safe in the art and in the rest of the world. Make sure that you're being kind and make sure that you're being creative. And please send me those pictures. I wanna see all the cool stuff that you tie dye at home, that you dye with natural dyes, Sharpies, or if you come up with a different way to dye cloth. Make sure it's cotton or linen, something natural, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.